Hallelujah. So, can you testify that God's touching you through this? Yeah. 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 It's been beautiful. We, wow. We've just, I felt a release and, and a, 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 a deliverance in my own life. And it's been wonderful to witness it in yours and to see your faces change. And, you know, the things that have held us captive for so long, uh, uh, to see God take them out, root them out. <laughs> And break those things yeah. and break those strongholds that we have on, on Friday night. There was just a little group of us here, but we talked about uh, uh, David's a little bit about David's three anointings. Yeah. He was anointed three times once by Samuel, once by the tribe of Judah when he became king of Judah, and then two and a half years later by the tribe of Israel when he became tribe then of the whole northern uh, ten tribes and Judah and Israel came together as one nation under King David. And when those three anointings were complete and David came to the fullness of God's promise and anointing for him, the very first thing David did, Brother Alex, you're going to love this, the very first thing David did was go to Jebus or Jerusalem yeah. and captivate the stronghold. Yeah. The very first thing God, I mean, yeah, God through David <laughs> did was go and take the stronghold of the Jebusites. Yeah. And when he did so, he called it Zion. Yeah. It is the first time Zion is ever mentioned in the Word of God when there was a deliverance. Yeah. Uh, and God is bringing us to this Zion experience. This David experience, this presence of God experience, yes, yes. Oh, hallelujah, yeah. where we uh, get to know the deliverer because the deliverer comes out of Zion, yes. hallelujah. So there he goes and he takes the city of the Jebusites, Jebus, which means to be trodden down, mm. it means to be oppressed, mm. it means to be crushed. Yeah. Here we have been oppressed and crushed and trodden down and strongholds made in our spirits that we can't seem to overcome and we uh, have allowed legally, we open doors for these strongholds to be fortified by our uh, view of our experiences yeah. or where we have come from. Hallelujah. And these negative things come in, all kind of creepy crawly things. We went through 26 of these particular spirits last week. You remember that list? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Your word of God's full of this stuff. Yeah. Hallelujah. And here, David comes along, and the very uh, a stronghold of the Jebusites that it wants to uh, tread down and impact in such a negative way powerful way that very stronghold became the fortress of David. Mm. Yeah. The same thing that kept them out was the very same thing that protected them once they took it. Yes. You know, you, you look at your weaknesses, you look at where you've come from, and, oh, it's a terrible thing in my life, and, and this has happened, and that has happened, and, and all these things are to uh, uh, oppress you, and vex you, and torment you, and even possess you. Yeah. Yes. Oh! I wish somebody would say amen. And we don't realize that these are there are spiritual creatures that are crawling in and manipulating your feelings, manipulating your thoughts, your desires, your wishes, and you become bound and you don't even know you're bound. Hallelujah. So here comes David. First thing he did, he didn't go out and deal with the Philistines. He didn't go out and conquer more land. He said, that's the place we need. Because God has said, He wants to dwell in that place. He wants that stronghold. These strongholds in your life that, that are oppressive and vexing and tormenting. When they are captivated by the Spirit and the presence of God, they become your strongholds for God. Yes. They become a place, a fortified city for the Lord, a place for the presence of God, a place for His glory. Mercy. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Hey. Hallelujah. So, 
said, don't be afraid of your strongholds. We tried to avoid them. We got weaknesses. Oh, the weakness got to hide it. I put it on the back. And God can't even see it. You know, we're so ignorant. We think God can't even see it. God's not going to see it behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, instead of acknowledging the weakness, acknowledging the stronghold, once God opens your eyes to it, thank you, Lord. Once he does, it's that means, okay, it's time to go captivate that Zion because I want to live there. Wow. I want my presence in that place. That's why I gave you that experience back there. Praise God. Because I needed a place for my presence. Oh, there was a negative experience. Exactly. God wants it for a place of his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So. Wow. Oh, oh. Um, I'm so excited. That's awesome. good. Thank you, Lord. Uh, okay, I'm going to have a problem. Let's skip that. Let's go to First Peter. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Yes. How wonderful he is. First yes. Peter, chapter 2. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm, I'm, I am going to begin today to talk about one door that we create, I guess is the word we could use, create, or, or open mm -hmm. in our lives uh, to allow these negative impacts or spirits or infirmities. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Praise God. Mm -hmm. It's just good to be aware of, of the, some of the things that we uh, allow or, or, or we experience to open these doors into our lives. And one of them is, and you're all going to get a shock when I write this one on the board, to think that I would choose this one as number one. <laughs> and you're going to think, what's that got to do with me? Oh, wow. All right. The occult. Yes. Wow. How has, a, I'm not talking about cult. I'm not talking about a church or a religion or an establishment or a cult. I'm talking about the occult. Come on. What does the occult have to do with you? How has the occult impacted and impacts mm. your life even today? Yes. Wow. What is it? Uh, and I'm, going, I'm only, I'm only going to pick on one major thing today. Maybe we can talk more about more later. Thank you, Lord. But the occult is, uh, well, let me tell you what the meaning of the word occult means. Uh, we think of the occult as something, you know, the devil comes along with his horns and, and his fork in his hand and, and his red tail. Uh, <laughs> I'm the devil. I'm Lucifer. I'm Behemoth. I'm Leviathan. I'm whatever else it may be. And, and we think, ooh, stay away from everything, you know, that's got the label occult on it. And, and of course we should, but that's how we think about it. Yeah. Like it's something uh, uh, revealed, like that's evil, so I won't touch it. No, that's not what a cult means. Wow. A cult means concealed. Right. It means secret. The, the word a cult means something that is covered and it is hidden from view. The word a cult means supernatural. It means mystical. Mm. Uh, it means obscure. The word occult means puzzling. Mm. <laughs> Anybody any, had any of these experiences over the last years where you're just puzzled oh, and gosh. perplexed oh, yeah. and things are hidden from view? Mm -hmm. It's secret. secret. <laughs> the occult power, never the source of the occult power never reveals itself. The difference between the power of God and the power of the occult world is God reveals himself. God, that's the very nature of God. That's the nature of the Holy Ghost is to reveal, is to bring light, is to bring understanding, is to cause you to see. But the source of the power of the occult is always concealed. You don't know where it's coming from. Wow. Well, I had an experience. Where did it come from? Well, I don't know, but it felt good. You better run from that experience. Yes. Ah! 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 
Praise God. If something is from God, God will do it in the light. He is a God of light. And in Him, the Word of God says, there is no darkness. Hallelujah. God works in the light. He establishes Himself in the light. He is the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Thank you, Lord. Love of God. So, there's a, a huge difference here between the uh, experience of the power of God and the experience that comes through cultish, occultish rather, practices. That power you will never know or understand or be led to its source. You will never know it. You will have an experience, but you won't know where it came from. Hallelujah. And then you can be told by spirits or even by humans who operate in, in this realm, praise God, oh, you don't need to understand. Mm. You just need to accept it. Mm. No, yeah. that is not the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. If God's going to give you something, He's going to give it to you in broad daylight. He's going to give it to you as revelation. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't have an experience like, well, I didn't get that. But guess what? You will get it. Yeah. And you will know what you receive. You will know what you walk through. You will understand what God gave you. That is the nature of God. The very nature of Yahweh, Jehovah, praise God, is to reveal Himself. That is the meaning of His name. The self-existent God who reveals Himself. Hallelujah. Woo! Are you all with me? I'm going somewhere today. Right. I'm so excited. Right. Oh, hallelujah! Praise Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, now, there's a difference between uh, mystery and mystic. There's a difference between mystery and mysticism. Jesus is a mystery. And the word mystery simply means difficult to explain. Yeah. How do you explain the love of God? That is a mystery. The love of God is a mystery. I cannot explain to you the love of God. I cannot explain to you uh, uh, the great mystery of the, of the eternal Father giving us His only begotten Son. That's a mystery. But yet mysteries are given by God to be Revealed. Yeah. God give well, let me just take you to another scripture. We'll go to Peter in a minute. <laughs> I'm in second uh, first Corinthians, sorry, chapter two, and I will read from verse seven. <clears throat> but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Not mystic, not mystically. See, the word mystic means hidden. Secret, mysterious. It means uh, concealed, paranormal. It means supernatural. You know why a lot of the Christian world is going to mysticism and are deviling in the occult? Is because the church of God has lost the supernatural. They have lost the supernatural power of God. And because it's gone, they then go into uh, tap into sources of power that they don't know where it's coming from, but at least gives people some kind of an experience. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Yes. I know what I've personally experienced uh, in my own life. I know that power. I know how forceful it is. I know the feeling it can give you, but I also know the feeling it will give you the day after. Thank you, Jesus. I'm very aware of what I'm telling you today. This, this mysticism and uh, occult spirit that has crept into the body of Christ in general. I'm not just talking about one little church here, one there. It is creeping in yeah. with this with this. Yeah. That people are feeling and experiencing. Man, we were watching something on, on YouTube the other day that somebody sent us. And, and uh, it was a, no, someone didn't send us. I think we found it. Anyway, 
uh, it was uh, from this church, and this uh, brother, it's a church well known in the USA. A church that's known for its deep knowledge in the Word of God. A church that flocked thousands and thousands. It's on the West Coast. <coughs> Massive church. And this church moves in all kind of power. And there was this guy uh, who is a, a mentee of the mentor, the main guy in that church, main pastor. I won't mention any names. And he was having a little seminar. And he got with the people and he said, okay, we need to feel this power. But he never said, what power? Oh. I'm watching this. He said, come on, concentrate with me. Oh. Concentrate. And he started going like this. Concentrate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feel the rhythm. Yeah, feel the rhythm. Here, there it is. Feel it, feel it now. Feel it. It's coming down. Yeah, it's coming down. Oh, yeah, come on. And he started going like this, faster and faster. Oh. People started falling out there. Oh. Cheers. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, he said, there it is, there it is. There it's coming down. That's the power. That's Whoosh. the power. Oh. Wow. Like what? Uh, he was talking about the vibration. Feel the vibration. Oh wow! This is in this is in a mainstream, well-known church, where people flock to from all over the world, and there that spirit has taken a root down in the midst of these people wow. and is manifesting itself, and nobody is asking where is that power coming from? Wow. Jesus was never mentioned. Wow. Oh. Thank you. This is this is the the incredible um, imitation. imitation and deception of this power. It imitates God in every facet. Oh. People fall out. They scream. They roll. They they shake. They they have all these different uh, emotions, and we all know that can be God. Yeah. We all know God moves and operates that way. But so does the old devil. Yes. Yeah. And because the church has lost the purity yeah. of, of sanctification, yeah. they have lost the oh. holiness, oh. they have lost the true fire. Mm. So to have something, they've got to generate a strange fire mm. and make something happen in their midst, but never understanding what the source oh. is oh. of what they are tapping into. Wow. Hallelujah. It's a serious lesson. Yes. Am I making sense? Yes. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, verse 7 again. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. Okay. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. In other words, the devil and all of his herd and the princes of the powers of the air. They did not know this mystery. They did not know this hidden wisdom of God because had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Oh. Had they known the mystery, had they known who he was and where he came from and where he was going and what they were doing when they actually crucified him, they would never have done it. Right. But it was a mystery to them. They could not see. But, verse 9, as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them the mysteries, the hidden wisdom. God has revealed the mysteries and the hidden wisdom uh, unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit, the Spirit of God, searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So, God is a mystery. God works in a mystery. He has got a lot of hidden treasures and truths, but they're not there to remain concealed. They are there to be given to us. They are there to be... God has more of a desire to reveal Himself to you than you have a desire to have it revealed. That's, it's, it's His nature. He can't go contrary to His nature. We scream up, you know, and holler and jump up and down. Oh God, open my eyes! Show me, show me! I want to see! I want to see! I want to see! <laughs> and God's sitting there up on His throne like, I've been trying to show you for 25 years. 
I've been, I've been trying to open your eyes. I've given you a million signs. I've worked certain circumstances in your life. I've brought people your way. I've opened doors for you. I've opened my word to you. I've done this for you. And you still won't see. Yes. So God is not the problem. We are the problem. Because somewhere there is a bondage. Somewhere there is a blockage. There are blind spirits. We saw it last week. Yeah. There are deaf and dumb spirits. Yeah. There are things that, that crowd and clog yeah. up your senses yeah. naturally and spiritually to where you are not able to sense and to feel and to know and to understand the things of the Spirit of God. We need to be set free. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Woo. Mm -hmm. um, Colossians 1, verse 26 and 27. 25. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you. In other words, I'm not a minister of, of last year or next year. I'm a minister of this time. This, God takes us through times and seasons and dispensations. And oh, how wonderful it is to find who you are in the ministry of the present. Mm -hmm. What is your purpose for now? We look, well, 25 years ago, do you know I had such a great revival and, and uh, we had a great church going, man, it's so awesome. A totally different dispensation. Yeah. It's gone, finished, over, it's ashes, it's burnt up, it's finished. Right. 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 That was a dispensation for them. Yeah. But Paul understood that he was a minister of this dispensation. I'm a minister of the present. Mm -hmm. This time, this season, this now. Yes. Okay? Yes. All right, reading on. What verse did I tell you? 25. 25. That, that's the one. I just want to make sure you're listening. <laughs> Actually, I was lost, so I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints. There are certain mysteries hidden for certain seasons. This is why you don't see everything at once. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I didn't see the tabernacle of David 20 years ago. It was a different dispensation. Yeah. And you can't begrudge your dispensations. Yeah. We've come through dispensations. Yeah. Yeah. We've come through times and seasons. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Mountains and valleys yeah. and experiences. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah! Yeah. How wonderful it is to walk with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then he brings you on to a new present dispensation. And in that dispensation, there is a mystery waiting for God to show you. There is a, a, a hidden truth for where you stand in this moment. God is a revealer. He wants to reveal the dispensation. Where you are. What you're going through. Why you're there. How you got there. Where you're going from here. God wants you to see that. Don't walk around in blindness and darkness. If you do, you are bound by spirits that have come to plague you and chain you up. Glory be to God, so you can't move anywhere mm -hmm. and become all that your spiritual DNA, mm -hmm. praise God, that God put in you from eternity past mm -hmm. can bring out into fulfillment in your life. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. Yes. Woo! Mm -hmm. Even uh, uh, the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. <sighs> glory to God. Okay. Now, a cult. Hidden, secret, concealed, unknown source. If you hear of a minister talking about a power and not connecting the name of Jesus to the power, mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. Run. Wow. He is the name yes. that is given by the Father to open up the channels that lead us to the Father where we can tap into that source of power. There's only one way to get there. Jesus said, I'm the only way to the Father. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of Jesus. 
But we are surrounded with a, a spiritual world that is working overtime these days to blind and deafen mm -hmm. the senses of the people of God to crawl in through the cracks in our fences, mm -hmm. like we talked about Eden, remember? Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. Uh, the serpent wasn't put in Eden. They let him in Eden. Yes. Mm -hmm. There was a fence around Eden. It was a fenced paradise. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. But they did not watch and keep mm -hmm. the God, and they did not worship and praise and God and protect that which God had given them. Mm -hmm. So the serpent came in, and there began the deceit. There began the lie. Oh, you don't have no. God doesn't. He didn't mean that. Yeah. You're not really going to die. You will live. It is the age-old lie. Oh, yeah. right. That's right. It's nothing new about it. Yes. It is the age-old lie still creeping in the paradise yes. of the hearts yeah. of the people of God. Yes. It's still going on this very day. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And it comes very much through these spirits right here. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus. I am going to talk about... Oh, hold your seats now. <laughs> you got your seatbelts on? <laughs> okay. That's what I'm going to talk about. Say that. It's called Yud Hey Va He. That's what I'm going to talk about. Oh boy. Say it. There is nothing used more in the occult than that name. Come on. That name is their source for uh, power. They know that there is a power in that name. And they use it for all it's worth. Jesus said, if any man climb up another way, he is a thief yeah. and a robber. Yeah. And there is a thief and a robber on Amen. the loose Amen. who is out to get that way. Hey. Because there is a substance in there that you can tap in. They know about this. Yeah. The devil is a thief and a destroyer. Yeah. He, he's a robber, he's a thief, he's a murderer, and he's a destroyer. Yeah. And there's nothing he wants more than the highest of God. Yeah. That's what he wanted before when he was still an angel of light. Yes. Let me put my throne. Above the stars of God, I want to be God. I want to carry that name. I want everything in that name. I want to be the one that administers the power of that name. Well, since that didn't work, he came down to this earth and he continued his mission. I want the name of the Lord. I want to use the name of the Lord. And so he does. And the line between what is godly and righteous and pure and unholy and filthy and impure is very, very narrow. Come on. Wow. wow. Oh, yeah. It is very, very narrow. And I've watched people crisscross over this line for years mm. until it kind of goes like this mm. to where phew, they're stuck in the darkness mm. wow. and they think they've got the light oh. and they're bound in something they don't know where it's coming from mm. don't know what the source is but oh man we had a great time there was the presence there yeah. presence of what right. wow. presence of who mm. what was going on and when you hear some of the things going on, makes your hair stand up. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, this is an incredible name. This is the name of the Lord. Uh, y, H, V, H, and uh, translated in our Bibles as capital O R D. Lord. Uh, the Germans, when they translated the Bible, they uh, put in the vowels and made it uh, Yehovah. But that's actually not the Hebrew name. Yahweh is. Hmm. Now, but back, way back, um, hundreds of years before Christ ever came, hundreds of years, the Hebrews stopped pronouncing the name 
Because they said it was too holy to pronounce. God never said don't pronounce it. They came up with that law themselves. So they stopped pronouncing it. And through the centuries, the, the true pronunciation of the name has been lost. So every brother and his, and, and his sister has come up with an idea of how to pronounce the name. <laughs> so it's Jehovah, Yahweh, God, Yisha, Ha, Hu, Ha, and all, all signs of, all kind of other ways to, to pronounce the name. Thank you, Lord. It's not so much about the pronunciation uh, that's going to get you into trouble. It's how you tap into it that's going to get you into trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to show you something today that is going to blow your mind. Yeah. Oh, Glory be to God. Amen. What is the way that God has provided for us to tap into that name? Mm. You say, well, I don't believe in praying in that name. I don't pray everything in the name of Jesus. You're right. You've got to pray everything in the name of Jesus. But David said in Psalm 113, from the rising of the sun... Yes. Until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord, Yahweh, yes. is to be praised. Yes. Yes. And no, you don't pray in that name. You don't command in that name. You praise that name. Yes. Praise God. Only it's the, the, the name of Jesus has been given to us for salvation. The name of Jesus has been given to us for healing and for life and for redemption. The name of Jesus has been given to us for access to that name. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. But through what means are we going to actually tap into this power? Mm. Wow. Into the source? What is it? What does God want us to do? Mm. Oh, you want to know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I got to have more help now. Yeah. Bless the Lord. There is only one name in the whole Word of God that has all four letters of this name outside of the name of the Lord Himself. And that is the name Judah or Yehuda. And Yehuda is spelled Yud. Hey, Vav, Dalit, Hey. So in the middle of this name, there is a Dalit. And the word of the letter Dalit means the door. Oh, wow. <laughs> Judah is the door. <laughs> what is Judah? Praise. 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 Yeah. No! Well, somebody shout. Yeah. to that name is to praise the name. Yes. Lift up the name. Yes. Recognize the name. Yes. Reference the name. Love the name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. This is the door. Right in the middle of the name, God puts the door. And by putting the door there, the whole name is changed from Yahweh to Judah. Praise. Hallelujah. Now, it's so powerful. Right. The problem is, so many people try to tap into that name through mystic practices. When you start forming squares and circles, I'm going to be real blunt and frank because I'm mad. It makes me so angry at the very precious things of God that have been used that now God's people are running from like a house on fire because they're afraid yeah. that they're going to be involved in something that is demonic. Yeah. God's name is not demonic. Amen. You know His name is written hundreds of times in the Word of God? Yes. We're going to run from it? You might as well take and rip out half your body. Right. It's everywhere you look. You'd have our hate. Yes. It's everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. it's, it simply means Yah is. Mm -hmm. That's the basic meaning. Yah is self-existent. Mm -hmm. He is. I am what I am. Yes. I am what I shall be. Yes. That's the name of the Lord. Yes. Nobody can change it. Nobody can alter it. Nobody's before me. Nobody's after me. Got no father. Got no mother. Never came from anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I just am. <laughs> <laughs>
myself as well as my wife and people that we have spoken to over the years have had experiences of an incredible bondage uh, it, it's like man after that you think I would be so free you think I would be able to hear the voice of God in a way I never had before but instead you become dull yeah. and it's like oh it's just a season you're going through a dry season so you accept the fact and then in the meantime while you're going through your dry season the stronghold becomes stronger and before you know it like God now wait a minute God uh, what God are we even talking about what spirit are we even talking about who, who, well, who am I, first of all? Right. The, and a confusion takes place. A confusion through mixture. A mixture of truth and error. There is no worse deception than the mixture of truth and error. It will bind you, it will put you in Babylon as quick as you can say, Paul M. Hansen. Ooh, I'm, on, I'm on a mission. Yes, it's good. Right. It's good. It's good. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm in Romans chapter 1. Uh, thank you, Lord. 
But make no mistake, however, after saying all this, make no mistake, the power and the reality and the beauty and the awesomeness and the majesticness of the name of the Lord from which everything came. Amen. All creation, all existence, including you and me, came from this name. It is the name that upholds everything. It is the sustainer, the giver, and the sustainer of all life. And all creation came from this name. Why would I not praise it? Why would I not worship that name? Praise God. God gave me a thing called praise. He put a door in there. And He said, this is my door. This is the door for you. Come on. You can go through that door and you can enter into my presence. This is what Zion is all about. It's about entering in that door. Entering and tapping into that ark. That presence. That presence that's in the midst of the tabernacle of God. Or David. On Mount Zion. That's what it's all about. Judah. David. Tribe of Judah. Jesus. Tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. They came from Judah. That's why he's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So, Yehuda, that lioness, ravenous, ranting, raving, spontaneous, glorious, active, demonstrative praise yes. to the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Whew. If we ever lose that, just, just dig a hole in the ground and put me in it and bury me. Because I don't want to go to church anymore yeah. if I can't be wild yeah. like a lion yeah. of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Glory to God. Okay, I'm in Romans 1. Uh, are you all getting this? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, oh, oh. I'm treading softly, but okay, maybe not. Oh, God. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Romans 1 verse 22 professing themselves to be wise listen people they became fools boy I'm seeing a lot of fools today they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man. In other words, they put God's glory on the same level as a human. Or they put the human on the same level as the glory of God. Yeah. Wow. Hey. Hallelujah. Of corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. In other words, loads of idolatry. And all those little creatures mean something. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. Through the lusts of their own heart, they lusted up. Lust is not just sensual or sexual. You can lust after all kinds of things. And these people lusted after position and power and fame and authority and knowledge and lusting. And God said, go ahead, have it. I'll give it to you. Let's see if this makes you happy. Hallelujah. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Listen, this is the verse I want. Who changed mm. the truth of God into a lie. Oh, Jesus, help us. Hello? Wow. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator wow. who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. The line I want in that verse is, is specific, specifically, thank you, Lord is they changed the truth of God into a lie. Yes. Jesus. Don't do that. Jesus. Don't take what is godly and pure and just and righteous and holy and majestic and honorable mm -hmm. and with the carnal reasoning of humanity bring it down to the level of man's idolatrous thoughts mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. That can't be right. Mm -hmm. And push it aside. I'm watching this. I'm seeing God's people do this. Mm -hmm. To the very things that God has given us to give us the power. 
To be who we are. To be who God has called us to be. I need God. Yes. Yeah. I can't do this on my own. Amen. I need Amen. every essence of God. Amen. Everything about God. Amen. I need all the characteristics of God. Yes. I need the power and the presence of God. I need God. Yes. Yes. And I've got access to Him through His Son, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And through Him then I start to glorify oh. and praise and honor and lift up and worship that holy yes. name. Yes. Yes. The name Thank of the Lord. Lord. To the name of the Lord. Isaiah, um, I'm in chapter 45. Oh, I'm telling you, saints, I think this is so magnificent. Yes. Yes. How, how wonderful to get your eyes open. And, you know, you hear me say this all the time, and every time I say it, I say to you, you'll hear me say it again. Because I'll keep on saying it, because... If, if we lose sight of this one little principle, we will go off track. Mm -hmm. And that is that everything in God's Word is balanced. Mm -hmm. Amen. If there is one side of truth, wow. there will yes. always yes. 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 be the other. Mm -hmm. If there is light, there will be a darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there is a mountain, there has to be a valley. Mm -hmm. Everything in the, in the Word, this is why you've got to study to show yourself approved of God. A workman who needeth not to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the Word of truth. Put things in their proper place. That belongs over here. This is the dark side. This is the light side. This is the positive. This is the negative. This is the up. This is the down. Everything. And you can go so far in anything to extremes right. in the Word of God where, oh, it's all this. You know, and you get so bogged down into that. And it's truth. It's, it's truth and life giving, but it starts to kill you because you don't have balance. Woo! Lord be God. You can go to the other side of the scale. Oh, it's all dark. It's all devil. It's all evil. It's all wicked. And then you throw truth away because you don't recognize it. In the midst of what you throw it away, there's some truth. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So stand in the middle of the river. Stand in the middle of the scales. And allow God to open your eyes in everything you study in the Word of God. Whatever God shows you. If He gives you a principle, ask the Lord, show me the other side. So you don't build a wall around your revelation. And you say, got it. I'm a Baptist because I see baptism. <laughs> I'm Pentecostal because I see the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. You get all these. I'm a Presbyterian because we believe in the Presbytery and we go and lay our hands on people and send them out with the gifts. Everybody's got a revelation. And so they build their wall around the revelation and they make a doctrine out of the revelation, make a church out of it, make an organization out of it, until everything in that little world is about that. Mm -hmm. And they're walking like this. Mm -hmm. Totally unbalanced. Not realizing that you've got something there, but did you ever see that? Mm -hmm. right? And God forbid you should ever try to show them that. <coughs> Glory to God. Jesus. I'm in Isaiah 45. Oh. God is a revealer. Yeah. I'm in verse 3. I will give thee the treasures of darkness mm. wow. and mm. hidden riches of secret places. Mm. That, now why? Why does he do that? That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, Yahweh, hallelujah, the Yah, the, the, the Yah is one, the one, that you may know that I, the Lord, which call you by name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, thou, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord. Mm. There is none else. Right. There is no God mm. besides me. Mm -hmm. I girded thee, though thou hast not known. That they may know from the rising of the sun mm. and from the west that there is none beside me. 
I am the Lord. Mm. There is none else. Mm. This is the purpose of Him revealing mm. the mystery. To show who He is. Mm. If you're not seeing who He is, and what you're experiencing and tapping into, I would question it. If you're not seeing the root and the source of where it's coming from, and who's giving that to you, and where that experience is coming from, I would question my experience. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yeah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. Because these hidden secret things are not hidden to be mystic. They are mysteries. They're not hidden to be some paranormal, supernatural experience that, I don't know what it is, but I mean, I felt it. Right. No, God does not work like that. That is not the way the name of the Lord works with the door in it. Hallelujah. But you take the door away, you take that worship and adoration to His great name away, and you start to devil, 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 devil. devil. You start to devil. You start to devil in, in that name with, with some kind of uh, motions and movements and whatever else it may be. You are opening doors, not that door. You are opening doors into a dark world that you do not need to be entering into. And this is what the Kabbalists do. They are into that name. They chant that name until they go into frenzies. They twirl around that name. They join hands and chant the name until they fall on the floor. Under an influence and a power. Yeah, they're under influence and power, all right. right? Praise the name of Jesus. But it's not the power of the name. It is a stolen power. Oh! They have robbed something from God that they are now using to generate and pour out on people to suck them into a dark world that they are calling light. Oh. Hallelujah. The book of Isaiah says, Woe! be unto those who call light for darkness yes. and darkness for light and good for evil and evil for good. Mm. Woe be unto the shepherds that scatter my sheep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I got such a holy indignation yes. on me to war and fight against this nonsense. Oh. Praise God. And at the same time to protect yes. Yes. and the holiness yes. and the majesty yes. you just like, no wonder God's people run from it. Because it is used so demonically. It is a stolen name. A stolen power. And I told the Lord down the floor in that room, if you want to use me to be one of, of whoever you are choosing in this generation and day and age, to go down in the dirt and pick up your precious it up again to where it oh, oh, no. Lift up that name to where it belongs. I will do yes, so. Yes. I don't care if anybody loves it or hates it, rejects it, accepts it. His name must be praised. Praise God. When Moses was in the wilderness, and he turned aside to see the burning bush that didn't burn. He walked up unto it, and God revealed himself to Moses. Uh, just tell him, oh, God, who shall I say send me? Just tell him, I am that I am, said you. 
And then God proceeded on to reveal himself to Moses. And he came down to somewhere, in, I think it's Exodus chapter 3, somewhere down there in those verses, where uh, uh, God finally said to Moses, I am the Lord God. This is my name forever. And it is a memorial to all generations. Wow. I'm in one of those generations. Amen. That means that that name is still a memorial. the beginning of all, the source of all, the uphold of all, the one with no father, no mother. Hallelujah. The ancient of days. Woo! Take that memorial out of your life. What have you got left? Glory to God. Psalm 78. And I'll, did I say something? Yes. yes. 78. Psalm 78 and verse 67. There it says, Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Moreover, this is the Lord now. When it says He, that's God. Moreover, He refused, God refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim. But he chose the tribe oh. of Yehuda. Mm -hmm. He chose the name with the door, yes. the Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Somebody oh. pray. established forever and he chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfolds I think everything is summed into those few verses yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he chose Yehuda he chose the name with the door he chose Zion because that's where the door is mm -hmm. praise God this is where the deliverer comes from oh. we just got to open the door I told you the other day, you can praise yourself out of bondage. Yeah. Praise yourself oh, out of pain. Yeah. You praise yourself out of pain. Glory be the name of the Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He chose, he, he refused, refused all those other tabernacles, oh. dwelling places. Oh. No, that's not where I've chosen to live. No, it's not with Joseph. As great as Joseph was. It's not with Ephraim, it's not, it's not up there, not with Manasseh, it's not there. Mm -mm. No, that's not it. It's Yehuda, because that's my name with the door in it. And that's the name I put in the midst of Zion. This is Judah. This is my house. This is my habitation. This is where my presence is. This is where my name must be glorified. Hallelujah. This is where freedom is. This is where life is. In the presence of the Lord, there's joy. There's power. There's power. There's healing, there's salvation, there's deliverance. Anything you need is right there in the midst of His presence. Oh, 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 Yehuda, the name of the door, was his sanctuary. Hello. There it is. Yehuda is his sanctuary. It's his habitation. He dwells. He dwells in the praises of his people. This, this is what he longs for. And this is where God's brought us to in this beautiful dispensation that we're in. Where the, the mysteries, things that I've never seen, but maybe you have, that are, uh, God is opening up and pulling out and showing us about who, who He is and who we are. 
See, once you get a vision of, of more of who God is, you start to understand who you are. You start to understand your DNA. That, that purpose in your spirit, you start to see and get why you exist. <laughs> 